Lord, I choose to obey your word. For as I dwell and walk in your presence, I shall not lack. Poverty be far from me and my household in Jesus' name. I will walk in your blessings, Lord. I will rise above all that hell has to offer and accept heaven's best here on earth. Everything I set my hands to will prosper because I make you my dwelling place. You are my refuge and my fortress. Thank you, Lord, for your provision. I accept it by faith, fully expecting your blessings in every area of my life. For wherever your presence is, there is no lack. Therefore, Lord, as we receive today's offering, we are believing you for abundant harvest, health, jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, benefits, sales and commissions, favorable settlements, estates and inheritance, interest and income, rebates and returns, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, scholarships and grants, inventions with royalties, finding money, bills paid off, bills decrease, blessings and increase, bargains and child support. Thank you, Lord, for meeting all of our financial needs that we may have more than enough to give into the kingdom of God and promote the gospel of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. Where the glory is, great things happen. Amen. Well, let's, let's go quickly through some verses and then we're going to see what God has to do today. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Verses 1 through 5, this is Paul writing to the Corinthian church, one of the most educated men that ever lived. He was a, a scholar in the, in the original languages, but it says, And I, brethren, when I came to you, did not come with excellence of speech or of wisdom, declaring to you, the testimony of God. How many of y'all got a testimony of Jesus saving your soul? Well, Pro, uh, Revelation 19.10 says, For the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. See, you can be prophetic just by having a testimony. Just by sharing your testimony with others, God can change somebody's life. That's why a testimony about Jesus Christ is so powerful. Well, this is what he's saying. He didn't come with all his scholarly knowledge or wisdom. He came with the testimony of Jesus Christ. He said, For I determined not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. But he goes on and he says, And my speech and my preaching were not with persuasive words of human wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power. But he says that your faith should not be in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Okay, I had to throw these verses in, and now I'm going to take you over to Psalm 84, because this is for you, you guys that are here today. You know, and I was getting a little more stern in me this morning. I was wrestling because, you know, i got to say, i got to fine-tune it and say what God wants me to say. But in this passage, it's, of course, uh, it was a psalm of Korah is what the Word tells us. But in verse 4 it says, Blessed are those who dwell in your house. He's talking to the Lord. If you're in the house of God, you're blessed. If you're in the house of God, His presence is there. If His presence is there, His glory is there. And if His glory is there, then His power is there. And if His power is there, then He can blow up bridges that have been made into your life that you don't need. He can destroy yokes of infirmities off of you so that you can be healed. But he goes on to say, Blessed are those who dwell in your house. They will be praising you. They will still be praising you. I preached here 20 years ago, and it was an awesome place, and it's still an awesome place. So you're still praising God, hallelujah, even after 20 years. 
That's awesome to me. Blessed is the man whose strength is in you. When you put your hope in him, his strength is there for you. And as they pass through the valley of Baca, I think I mentioned this just a little bit last week. As they pass through the valley of Baca, that means the valley of tears. That means the valley of hard knocks, the valley of difficulties, the valley of infirmities, the valley of addictions, the valley of whatever has come your way. He is there for you, and he's saying here that you are blessed because your heart is on pilgrimage. Your heart is on the journey. Your heart is to go through. That's what I talked about to you last week. They make it a spring. The rain also covers it with pools. Man, he covers because of your weeping. He covers you with his water, with his blessing. You know, in the valley, when there's water and sunshine, things grow. I know I mentioned this last week, but I had to come back to it again. They go from strength to strength. Each one appears before God in Zion. Zion is a representation of the church. All the way back to David's tabernacle, where there was no holy of holies. It was wide open. The ark, everybody could see it. They could worship there freely. They danced. They played tambourines, timbrels. They played stringed instruments. They played brass instruments. They let go and had awesome worship. That was in the presence of God in Zion. So Zion represents the church. Well, we, we can have that any day. We can have that anywhere His presence is. I mean, somebody could just jump up and shout. Well, I was waiting. Anyway. <laughs> Verse 11, I'm going to add an extra verse, Sister Susan, this week. For the Lord God is a sun and a shield. The Lord will give grace, and here it is again, Kelly, glory. He gives grace and glory. Didn't you sing that this morning? That was the Spirit of God. I had my Bible tabbed right here. The Lord will give grace and glory. And I like this part. No good thing will he withhold from those who walk uprightly. There's nothing that he's going to withhold. Now, let's see. I'm going to step off the stage here for a minute. I'm going to tell you, do you want to know how to press in? to that place where the presence of God is, where you can get everything that you need. He said you'll lack nothing. Whatever it is that you need, He has it for you if you're a real believer. I read this this morning online. Somebody wrote, Worry is a conversation with yourself about the things you cannot uh, Cannot change. Did somebody else read that? Worry is a conversation with yourself about the things you cannot change. Prayer is a conversation with God about the things He can change. He wants you to pray as talking to His disciples, but not like those in the synagogue that are hypocrites. And so he goes on down, go to the next verse. You know, they stand there. They want to be seen by men and so on. Go to verse 6. And he says, But thou, when you pray, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut the door, pray to my Father which is in secret. And the Father, thy Father which seeth in secret, shall reward thee openly. Amen? Hallelujah. But when you pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think they shall be heard for their much speaking. But be not ye therefore like unto them, for your Father knoweth what things you have need of before ye ask him. 
After this manner, therefore, pray ye, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Then he goes on to talk about forgiveness. You're not going to get from God if you don't forgive. You're blocking the thing you're praying about. But let's look at this. My Father in heaven, he said, Hallowed be thy name. I pray this prayer every day. That's the first prayer I do. But I do it with understanding. All right? Now, we see the names of God. Jehovah Sidkenu, our righteousness. Jehovah M. Kedish, Jehovah who sanctifies. Jehovah Shalom, he's our peace. Jehovah Shama, Jehovah is there. Jehovah Rophe, he's our healer. Jehovah Jireh, he's our provider. Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah my banner. Jehovah Rohi, Jehovah my shepherd. Now, I can leave this with Pastor Dale if he wants to have this copy, and he can make copies for anybody that needs a copy of this to know the names of God. If you're talking to the Father and you say, Hallowed be thy name, or holy is your name, you need to know what his name is. We can say Yahweh, Jehovah, the Jews won't even say that. They say Y-H-W-H. Well, I'm not religious. I just say Jesus. Amen. You know, I could say Yeshua if I want to, but you know what? He answers to Jesus. I cast out demons by Jesus. So I'm just a country boy, so I just do that. You know, I'm not going to try to get the formula just a certain way. You know, just be real with God is what I'm telling you. But this is what his name is all about those things. Then what I do is I go to the Jabez prayer after that. And that is a powerful prayer. And it's in 1 Chronicles 4.10 where Jabez, actually in verse 9, he was more honorable than his brethren. And his mother called his name Jabez, saying, because I bore him or bear him with sorrow or with pain. How many of you ladies had childbirthing pain when you had your kids? Well, most ladies do. So, but she had, didn't have to name him pain in the neck or wherever, you know. But he was a pain to her. But his, he was more honorable. That meant he was committed. Are y'all wanting to be committed to God? You want God to work in your life? You want Jesus to fulfill his word in you? He will. I tell you what, I know this. When we lay hands on people that really want to be transformed, there's a prophetic unction and power that's released. Can I encourage you today? Well, let's finish Jabez real quick. It says, He called on God saying, Oh, that you would bless me indeed and enlarge my territory, that your hand would be with me and that you would keep me from evil that I may not cause pain. So God granted him what he requested. Then what I add on to that is, I say, Lord, fulfill your purpose in me. Help me to do the mission that you've called me to do. Help me to fulfill the vision that you've given me. And not only that, then, Lord, help me reach my destiny. So listen up, children. To approach each day your battles, don't let your hearts faint. Fear not, do not tremble, neither be afraid. For the Lord our God is he that goes with us to fight for us against all of our enemies to keep us safe. Now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord makes his face to smile upon you and is gracious to you. The Lord lifts up his countenance upon you and gives you his peace. Amen.